Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Ku Xuan. I'm from Huazhong University of Science and Technology. Today, my talk is Deep Attention-Based Classification Network for Robust Depth Prediction. It is a joint work with Ray Boni, Chun Huashen, and Zhi Guochao. Ray Boni and I are equal contributions. Depth prediction is a fundamental task in computer vision. The task is giving a single image. We need a method to automatically assign depth value to the to each pixel. First, let's say how do prior work tackle the task of depth prediction. Here we just need list some classic learning-based methods. In NIPS 2005, I to use a discri discriminatively trained mark random field. At that time, their method was based on handcraft features. In ECC V 2012, Kevin, inspired by image retrieval, they performed KNN query to uh, find similar images from RGBD database. The two papers mentioned above mainly based on handcrafted features, and the performance was not so satisfactory. Since the significant progress made by deep learning, deep features replace handcrafted features. In NIPS 2014, David Egan was the first one that used a multi-scale deep network to predict depth map from a single image and significantly improve the performance. In ECCV 2016, Ravi tried to predict single view depth by unsupervised learning. The main idea behind this paper is image reconstruction. Now, the time came to 2018. In CPR 2018, these three papers for using other data to augment depth prediction. Other depths tried to use synthetic images, while mega depths and our paper using web data. In the future, what will be an interesting topic in depth, depth prediction? Uh, in my opinion, I think robust depth prediction is a good choice. Then, what is robust depth prediction? Prior deep learning based methods lead to tree models on individual data sets. For example, for indoor images, we need to tree model on indoor data sets. For outdoor images, we need to tree model another model on outdoor data sets. Models trained on one data set often perform worse on a different one. Now we can answer the question. Robust depth prediction is to train a single model on both indoor and outdoor data and the model can perform well on both data sets. In particular, in this challenge, we train a single model on both Scanlight and KT data sets and evaluate our method on individual data, data sets. Uh, before, before introducing our method for robust vision challenge, we want to share our CPR paper in brief. The goal of this paper is to predict relative depths in unconstrained scenes using one single model. It happens to meet with the spirit of the robust vision challenge. Uh, we choose a similar, similar task, relative depth prediction. We do this work based on three observations. One is that models trained on one data set often perform worse on a different one. Second, training with one pair of ordinal relationship is not good enough and is prone to get confusing predictions. Third, pre-training using multiple pairs of supervision and then fine-tuning the model helps make better predictions. Then a question arises, how to cheaply get dense relative depth maps? If we can have more pairs of ordinal relationship for training, our model will get better results. Uh, the basic idea is that disparity map can indicate the ordinal relationship of any point pair. We propose uh, to automatically generate dense relative maps from web, web stereo data. This is our pipeline. Uh, here we give some examples of our data set, which covers a wide range of scenes, including both indoor and outdoor scenes. We compared several network architectures and used a model like this, which is similar to future primary network. 
instead of training with uh, ranking nodes using only one pair of ordinary relationship, we propose an online mini batch sampling followed by an improved, improved ranking nodes. For each image in our dataset, we randomly online sample multiple pairs every time. Each pair is labeled as one or minus one or zero according to their relative value. I do not detail the network architecture and those function here. If you are interested in, the, in this work, welcome to post E20 and talk with me tomorrow morning. Here we just show some fellow results on both relative depth prediction and metric depth prediction. We achieved the best performance on depth in the world is that our, our method is visually more clear and consistent predictions. We also evaluate our method on NYUD V2 dataset details processed by our method are visually consistent with input images. We pre-train our model on our real web dataset and fine-tune on NYUD V2 dataset with turkeys by weight nodes. We found that the pre-training improves the performance and our best model can achieve state-of-the-art results. The top row are input images and the bottom are our predictions. Our CPR paper is about robust relative depth prediction. Here we think about a more challenging question. How about robust metric depth prediction? We propose a deep attention-based classification network for robust metric depth prediction. Different with prior deep learning-based methods, we train a single model on both Scanlight and KT dataset. As we can see from the, as we can see, the images from Scanlight and KT, it's easy to find that the patterns in two datasets are different. Depth range in Scanlight is from 0 to 10 meters, while the KT is from 0 to 80 meters. So how to tolerate how to tolerate depth distribution discrepancy between two, two data sets is the first challenge. We formulate depth prediction as a multi-level classification task. So the depth distribution discrepancy can be tolerated via a softmax classifier. The second challenge is that how to select more discriminative features for different things. Which we use a attention mechanism method. Uh, our deep attention based classification model consists of three parts feature extraction module, multi, -task, multi scale feature future module, and uh, prediction module. The feature, the feature extraction module is, bu is built upon REST index 101. For each future future block, two groups of future maps with different semantics are merged via a channel attention block. Channel-wise attention mechanism will give the discriminative features higher weight. To get our final predictions, we attach a prediction module. Since we formulate depth prediction as a classification task, we need to project continuous depth to different beings. In our experiments, we choose to project depth value into log 10 space, and the sub-intervals key is set to 150. Depth range alpha and beta are set to 0 0.25 and 80 respectively. In the training phase, we use the pixel-wise multinomial logistic loss function to train our model. In the testing phase, we use a soft weighted sum inference to get our fellow predictions. PI is the score vector of the pixel i. Omega is the weight vector of beans. In this way, we can send for the discrete, discrete label back to continuous depth value. Let's say experiment section. First, we detail our experimental setup. We implement our system using medical light on a single NVIDIA GTX 1080. We choose ResNext 101 as our backbone. To balance the number of samples during training, the number of training samples from KT and Scanlight are 17,000 and 16,000, respectively. To justify the effectiveness of classification model, we compare classification with regression and evaluate on the official validation dataset. 
The suffix ROB means training with both KT and scanner data. From the two tables, we find that classification is more suitable for robust depth prediction. Noting that even training with the mixed data, the performance of classification did not drop. To justify the effectiveness of attention mechanism, we compare our classification model with, with and without attention module. From the two tables, we find that attention mechanism plays an important role on indoor dataset and significantly improve the performance, while on KT dataset, we did not find obvious improvement. We visualize the attention width in four channel attention blocks. We find that for hair features, the value of each channel becomes more discriminative. Different from se semantic segmentation, the predicted probability distribution of any point in the image is similar to a Gaussian distribution. As the training goes on, the, va the variance becomes smaller. We find that most of the error prediction occurs in nearby class classes. Using soft-weighted soft, soft sum can get more accurate predictions. We compare hard max inference with soft weighted sum inference as well. From the two tables, we find that soft weighted sum inference improves the performance. We ranked the second place in the task of single image depth prediction. In each, in each benchmark, we ranked the third place on the KT and the first place on the Scanet. We compare our method against the official baseline on the KT benchmark, and our method significantly performed better. We also use the same model to evaluate on the Skynet benchmark. Our method performed better as well. Some takeaway message. First, classification is more suitable for robust depth prediction. Second, attention mechanism helps select discriminative features. Third, soft weight sum inference is a good trick to further improve the performance. Thank you. So I have two questions. Um, the first one is, in the first part of your talk, um, you showed this uh, ground roof uh, being sparsely selected. So my question is, how do you select those? Is there an active mechanism, like active learning, on how to select the regions that are most informative? And the second question is, um, so in both talks, we've seen that uh, a discrete loss function or disc predicting uh, classification uh, yeah. uh, seems to make it uh, easier, an easier task. Do you have any intuition why this is the case? Can you repeat the first question? <laughs> Sorry. Okay, the first question is just about uh, like how you select the points where which you label when you when you label sparsely. Okay, the first question is uh, <laughs> we random we random sampling sampling the points pair, point pairs. And then with uh, an input of ranking loss. Ah, so it's, it's, it's not. Uh, it's not. Uh, it's an online sampling. Oh, so you sample it from the dense ground truth. Yes, that's from dense oh, ground truth. Okay, okay. I thought I, I thought you had no dense ground truth available. That's why you were sparsely sampling. Okay, sorry. No, okay. And for the second one. Uh, can you so the second one was about like why do you think like this classification loss is more suitable uh, than the regression loss? Uh, in, ma in many in our experiments, uh, we find that c classification is more robust, and the the performance did not drop significantly. But the regression is is uh, not as strong as classification. Yeah. Do you have an idea why this is the case? Uh, so sorry, I haven't come, okay. come, uh, come up with an idea with it. Thanks. Thanks. I actually have, I have one more related question, if you have okay. a moment. So what do you think about, like, you know, with this uh, classification seems to perform better than regression for, yeah. like, a single value yeah. per, per pixel. What do you think about other representations, like predicting normals or something? Uh, instead of a single depth value? 
uh, use a use a clarification use clarification to other task, tasks like normal estimation. Like you, you can also get um, you can estimate depth through through normals as well. Or yeah, I guess yeah. what do you think about other representations of of depth? Do you think maybe regression would be better in this case? Um, yes, may, maybe regression that that may, will be the good for uh, other tasks. For uh, actually, in our experiments, we find that uh, in relative depth pre pre relative depth prediction, regression is is good enough. Yeah. Thank you.